G'day, and welcome to Crystal Clear Mathematics, where it is easier than you think. This is the third video in which I'm describing the use of T formulae, or half angle formulae, in simplifying problems in trigonometry. These are the three formulae that we're talking about, and in my first video I showed how to uh, derive them and suggested that's a good way to memorise and learn them and to know where they come from. The second video I showed how these three equations can be used to simplify, or at least convert, a certain class of trigonometric equation to make it, or to turn it into a polynomial and quite often into a quadratic, which was much more easily solvable. And in this video I'm going to show how these same uh, T formulae can be used to simplify certain kinds or a certain class of trigonometry, of, uh, of integral. I am tired. Now, not all of these integrals work out very nicely at the end, but I'm going to use as an example one that I, I did not long ago, uh, 3 plus 5 cos x dx. This is one of Jim Caronis' integrals. But it's very typical of this class or category of trigonometric inter integral that would respond to this kind of use. It has a single trig function, not a cos squared, but it's a simple cosine function, buried away inside, in this case, the denominator of a fraction. Without this notation, it's actually rather difficult to integrate. But by using this, we can convert it into a fraction with two polynomials and that opens up the possibility of dividing the polynomials, or if the top one is the derivative of the bottom, we get a logarithmic function, or perhaps if the polynomial on the bottom is factorizable, we can uh, use partial fractions. Uh, if it turns out to be a, a sum of squares, we can get an inverse tan function. There can be a variety of things developed from this by converting them into a fraction based on polynomials. So this is very, very powerful, and it's this kind of integral that it takes place. Notice, I don't just have to substitute the cosine of x, I've got to substitute the dx. So there's a further step required where we have to find the derivative of this to get a conversion from dx to dt. So let's do that first. If I find the derivative here, I get dt dx is the derivative tangent, which is 6 squared x on 2 times the derivative of x on 2 which is a half. Now if I rearrange this I'm going to put the 2 up here so 2 dt. I'm going to move the 6 squared down over here 6 squared x on 2 and I'm going to move the dx up. So I've done a little bit of shuffling a few things together here because I'm running out of space. And I want you to notice that this means that dx is 2dt over sec squared x on 2. Now we have an identity for that. Here we have a square of a secant. Sec squared x on 2 is the same as 1 plus tan squared x on 2. And you can see straight away I think I have run out of the bottom of the board, so I'll go across. This is 2 dt over 1 plus, and tan x on 2 is worth t, so tan squared x on 2 is t squared. So we, we can replace our dx up here with 2 dt on 1 plus t squared. Let's see what a difference it makes. This rather very difficult integration is simplified in this way. 3 plus 5, lots of, and instead of the cosine of x, I'm going to write this. 1 minus t squared on 1 plus t squared. And this bar, with this vinculum, acts as grouping symbol for that denominator. Times dx, and we've worked out what dx is. It's 2 dt over 1 plus t squared.
Now, the top is quite simple. We have 1 times 2, which is just 2, dt. But here we have this expression multiplying both parts of this expression. So we have 3 lots of 1 plus t squared and 5 lots of... Now when I multiply these, this denominator and that factor there divide out. They're the same. So I just get, le get left with 1 minus t squared. And if I simplify, I get 3 plus 3t three squared plus 5 minus 5t squared, which will give me the integral of 2 over 3 plus 5 is 8, and 3t squared minus 5t squared is minus 2t squared, and that will be the integral of dividing through by 2, 1 over 4 minus t squared dt. Now, from this, from this awkward trigonometric function, we now have a fraction which involves polynomials. Now, it's not a logarithmic structure because the derivative of this is negative 2t, and there are no t's on the top. But you do notice this is a difference between squares, and that means that our next step will be to separate it and use uh, partial fractions, and to separate it into 2 minus t times 2 plus t. Uh, I don't really know whether I should go there in this video because I'm not concentrating on solving the problem. You'll find that in Jim Caronis' list of integrals, I think it's about 30 or 31 or 29 or something. Uh, so by all means look those up and you'll see the complete solution. But what a lovely transformation takes place. So if you had some other integral that had you know, 3 sine x plus 2 or something like that, these substitutions are very worth considering. So there you go. Without making the video too long, I've tried to show how integrals can be considerably simplified using these T formulae. And uh, Kristen, I thank you for asking me to show these. I was going to show them, produce these videos well down the track after I finished the Coronius 100, but I think it was timely that uh, you asked for clarification. So these are for you. I thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed these, then please, by all means, click on the like button, leave an appropriate comment, and if you're not already a subscriber, then I encourage you to subscribe so you find out about future videos. Thank you.